Hello, welcome to Crafting Kitty. My name is Erin and it is Saturday. So that means it is time for my weekly roundup. Yeah! So what is my weekly roundup? It is basically where we go through my week in crafting. We also talk about um, the book I'm reading. So it's all exciting. We talk about my whips, works in progress, and FO's finished objects. Let us hop right in, because I am surround. I've had a bit of a whip explosion. Naughty, naughty Aaron. That's okay. That's okay. So what have I finished? Let's do FO's finished objects first. I finished my car project. Yay! So um, I do vehicle pickup drop off for chomps for school. And I have had this as my car project since last school year. I started it at the end of the year and I've just finished it. He wanted a red and orange blanket and then I had some yellow left over from my temperature blanket. So we decided to add that in too. I basically made a garter stitch blanket on the bias. So it's diagonal striped. And so we started with the red, then I worked in the orange, and then went straight to the orange, and then we worked in the yellow, and then I ended on the yellow. So it's a big old square. The striping is just two rows, so a back and forth, so I didn't have to cut the yarn each time. It kind of gives it like a pinstriping effect, and yeah! It's fun. I have not made a blanket like this in ages. For my car project blankets, it has to be our projects. They're not all blankets. This was the first time I did a blanket. And it got a little big at times. It was a little tough to manage near the end. Um, but it has to be a project that is easy to pick up and put down. Because, you know, the, the lines move and all that stuff. You got to be ready. And this one certainly was that case. It's just a simple garter stitch, which is knit every row. And like I said, done on the bias. So for the first half, you were increasing. And for the second half, you were decreasing to make it square. And here we go. Chomps was very excited. I actually finished it on Tuesday, I think. And he's had to wait this whole time for it. Oh my goodness, but that's okay. He will be very glad to have it. I don't want to put it where it's going to block my exit. Let's put it here. What else did I have? Okay, so also for Chomps, he had picked out a yarn from Joanne one time. The Big Twist Value. And it was when this ombre stuff had first come out. Sunrise Ombre. And... He wanted me to make him a hat and blanket for his prized, his favorite stuffy, his, his favorite lovey. So I made the dinosaur the hat. He's got the little crochet hat. And now I'm working on the blanket for the dino. I'm doing it, I put a hair tie in the middle so it can go over his neck and be like, you know, one of those, one of those lovey thingies that we make. And then Chomps can take it on or off as the dinosaur needs it. Um, so now, I think I'll keep the dino in my room until I get the blanket done. Oh, I guess I showed you a whip already, kinda. We'll go through that again. Okay, what else did I do? I did do... The bod had a palooza this week. Let's get Hattie back. I think she will not be super upset at this one. This is a hat I have made before. And I think Laura said um, they had done it before, but she didn't realize it because it was as a hat and scarf set. It's basically the chocolate bonbon beanie in the five weight. So I put, I put the seam right at the front, didn't I? There you go. So there it is. I used 
some Hobby Amigo Aquarelle, which is discontinued now, I believe. It's 100% acrylic, chunky weight yarn. This is color 11. I got this a couple years ago in my first Hobby Black Friday order. So I figured, time to get it used. So I did. So this hat, this is 109 yards. Yeah, 109 yards. I had to just barely break into a second skein to finish the hat. So the hat did take more than one skein. But here it is. Beautiful. You know, I need, I have fallen out of taking pictures of my finished objects. So then I don't have it to post on Instagram. So that's been annoying lately. Because I was doing good about actually posting on Instagram. What else do I have? I whipped up another hat on my Addy. I used some of the leftover Peyton's Patton's a classic wool worsted. And here we go, double layer beanie. So basically, I collect yarns I think will make good hats and put them down by the Addy. And since I made that felted bag, I had some backups. So now I want to work through what I've collected down there and um, then do my next Addy book project, which is a blanket, which I think is going to take a while. So this is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. The color is dark gray marl. There it is. I think that turned out really, really nice. I like it. Um, I also, on the Addy, over there, finished a scarf that I had been working on. So this matches the, um, some hats that I've been making. This is an adult size scarf. The colorway on this, so this is a Karen Jumbo, um, I don't know if it's Karen Jumbo Ombre or not. I think it was just Karen Jumbo. And the colorway was Country Basket. Brian had got it for me on clearance from Michael's, I think. So, finally working it up, getting it used. Um, the Karen Jumbo, my Addy does not like it. I have to do a lot of, like, babysitting and watching it to make sure it's not tucking stitches. This Peyton's Classic Wool works like a dream. I didn't have to babysit at all. It was just crank, 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 and ignore. So, this was a good... A good yarn for the Addy. Loved it. And that is all of the finished objects I'm going to show you today. Pretty fast. Um, I have a couple more I finished, but um, they are for a review. So they're back with the yarn for the review to get filmed, and I'm not going to get it. So, sorry. You'll see it eventually. Um... What else? Oh, I also have a hat that's on the Addy, and I stopped just before I needed to pick it up off. of. So that's done. It's just not cinched up. So you'll see that next week. Okay, so what do I have here? I'll show you. I'll actually show you the lovey I'm making for Chomps' Dino. Here it is. I'm just making a granny square, and that's a hair tie in the middle so he can stretch it and go get it on and off the dino easily. This should be done next week as well. That doesn't take too terribly long to do. And then let's do the pickle jar. Um, so I did finish. This is the Aberdeen um, pickle jar kit from Tangled Poets. And I've been adding one mini a week and showing you my progress. Here is last week's mini, the blue. I think that looks pretty cool. So it's a really fun, I'm making the classic kind of pickle jar cowl. It comes with two patterns now, the cowl and a kind of a bias scarf. So my plan is, it also comes with the needles that I'm using here, Knitter's Pride Basics US 6 24 inch circulars. Um, so basically I'm going to make this and then I figure I'll, I'll order a refill fill her back up and make the bias scarf. But we have been picking the next color. Let's get the jar top off. 
I just hold it high where Aaron can't see it. Let's grab it. Oh, I thought it was going to be the orange. It's not. It's another green and blue one. So that's going to match kind of nicely. The last one was green, blue, and purple. This has a couple different shades of green and a couple different shades of blue, but no, no purple that I'm seeing. The darker is kind of a navy. That's fun. We'll see how that looks next week, assuming I get it done. So far, we've been good about getting one done a week, which makes me proud. Let's get a drink. Mm! I forgot the stitch marker of the day. I put it right on top so I would remember it. And I did it. I just hopped right in. Okay, so we're on day 12 of the stitch marker of the day from Ellie Leva at Ellie Leva's Crafts and More. We are winding down her St. Patrick's set. So let's see what day 12 has in store for us. Oh, that's cute! So it's like a cupcake, and on top of the cupcake, there is a leprechaun hat with a shamrock. Oh, that's cute! I love it, and I love the backing paper, the shamrocks. Ellie, this is wonderful! Let's find a good spot for it. I like to do it with... Here, this one's mostly brass enamel charms. Let's put it there. Okay. So here is the stitch marker set. All jumbled up on the holder. There you go. So far we've got a couple more left. We have 15 days total. So that was day 12. We should have, what, three more? Pretty cool. Okay. So... Lori at Armchair Chef has put out her video for MYC424, so the April video is live. If you are interested, go check out Lori Armchair Chef and get all the deets and send her a message. Um, I was actually on top of the ball this time and sent her a message. I am again going to do a whip, or hopefully more than one whip, but like I said, I've had a bit of a whip explosion. So... We'll see what happens this month. But I was doing some cleaning in the craft room and I found one, two, three, four, five whips that I had totally and completely forgotten about. So I picked this one and said, this is what I'm going to do. Back last year, when we did, Lori, when I messaged you, I said it was a scarf. It was not. It was the Fingerless Mitts month, so that was like November, maybe? Um, I did a pattern from Hooked by Robin, and there was a matching scarf. And Crystal from Hook That Yarn had found a matching hat as well. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make the full set. So <laughs> I started the brim of the hat. I sent Lori a picture. I had like maybe a third of the brim done and abandoned it. So that is what I'm going to do. It's using this beautiful Lion Bread Landscapes yarn in Mountain Range. I love this. This is gorgeous. Um, and what I've done is I have completed the brim. So I finished the brim and I've started picking up the stitches for the top of the hat. So this is the type of hat where you do the back loop thingy and make the brim and then sew it together and work from the bottom up which I don't love that style of hat but it's not my favorite construction of hat but I l really love the look of the fingerless mitts it's like a shell um the hat is also is actually called slouchy shell stitch hat it's free on a blog there's an adult and a child version, I think. I have the adult version. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping I have enough here. My skein's getting a little floppy here. But it's only 20 rounds. Fingers crossed. Cross your fingers for me. Let's see. So you do the band in, it says 3.25 millimeter hook. I didn't have one, so I used a 3.75. And yeah, 
and then you move up for the body of the hat to a 5.5 millimeter. So that's what we're doing. And like I said, I will try to remember to link that down below because it's free on a blog. Okay, what else should I show you? I'll show you. So that's kind of one of the whip. I'm going to call that a whip explosion because it's adding a project in that I wasn't working on before. The Dino Lovey, that doesn't really count because I always have a simple project that I'm working on in here while I'm editing. So that just stays in here. That doesn't come out into the regular rotation. This hat has been added to the regular rotation. And this next project has been added to the regular rotation. So it is the 30th. One more day to get in on the Crafting Kitty community, community, Crafting Kitty Creator Spotlight. We are featuring Expression Fiber Arts this month. Um, I'm pointing to this because this is a wrap I made, the Doritus wrap. This will be one of the prizes um, for the giveaway that's involved. So basically the spotlight is we pick a creator each month. We celebrate them by making things based on their patterns or tutorials. You can also share things you have made in the past. So it does not have to be something created this month. Um, you can send me as many pictures as you want, but you have three bites of the apple for the giveaway. So only three entries into the giveaway. Um, but I finished that. So I thought I'll look ahead to next month. I'm not going to say who this is by, but if you've watched the video and watched the sneak peek, you'll know. Um, but I did start, barely started, oop, I don't know how that ended up in there. I have barely started the shawl I am making for the next Creator Spotlight. I'm like three rows in. <laughs> so that has begun. Um, this bag, I think this was a gift from Sherry Knowles. It was like one of those little bags that are all folded up and you can throw in your purse. But I threw it in my whip bag. <laughs> they work perfect for whips too. You know what? You are going to share a bag with this for now. Because for some reason I didn't grab a bag for that project. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't know what I'm doing half the time. This isn't even for that pattern. Okay, let's do this one. Um, I am, I've declared 2024 the year of amigurumi. I'm going to try to always have an amigurumi going. I am working through this book, um, Crochet Cute Critters by Sarah Zimmerman. She is, of course, repeat crafter me on the YouTubes. Um, she also has a blog. Uh, I basically just started at the beginning and I'm going through, I had made like four of the patterns in here before. So I'm going to skip those but I'm making the ones I have not yet made before, just going down in order. So I take two and the kids get to um, swap places on who gets to pick first. It was Chomp's turn to pick first, but he picked the fox, but the elephant was up next. So I'm making a Bingo's Amigurumi again. This is Edward the elephant. She wanted, the kids get to pick their colors. They get to pick the eyeballs. They get to pick, they direct it. They say what they want, and I do my best to create it. Um, Bingo said she wanted this in blue and aqua. So I was like, "That's uh, those aren't colors I really have. But I had this yarn, which I got from... This came from Daniel at Paw Ply Guys. What I don't recall is which box this came in, because... I had purchased a D-stash box from Daniel, and then I had also messaged Daniel and said, oh, it's detached because I finished the piece. Oh my gosh, I had almost a panic. Oh, I had messaged Daniel and said, hey, if I send you some moolah, will you go shopping in the UK for me? And he did. So he went shopping and sent me a mystery box of yarn as well. So this is either from his stash or from what he had purchased for me in that second mystery thing. I don't recall which, but it came from the UK. It's a DK weight yarn, which this book says use um, four weight yarn. So this is going to end up a little smaller than the book says. Um, this book also says to use a five millimeter crochet hook. I went down to a four millimeter for the DK yarn. Um, it's Sweet Dreams Double Knit from Stylecraft, 100 grams. This colorway is, oh, there's a number, not a name. 
Oh, there it is. Seaside. Seaside. 7026. This is so soft. It kind of has a puzzle, that puzzle marling effect. And he had sent me two. So I definitely have enough to make the elephant, but I think it's only going to take one because here is the state of the elephant. <laughs> so I've got the head, the body, the legs, and one arm done. She picked blue eyeballs for it. So the eyeballs have been attached. So I need to make the other arm, the tail, the ears, and the trunk. So hopefully next week, Edward should be done or whatever she decides to name it. They can name it once it's theirs. It's theirs to do with as they please. So they can name it whatever they want. That is out of mommy's hands. Um, what else? do I have to share here? I kind of want to keep that organized. Um, let's do this. Okay, so I was working on a sweater for Chomps that I was freehanding. I last night finished the yoke. It's so they're growing kids. I try to make it make the items a little bigger than they are so they can wear it for a little while longer. You know what I mean? This one ended up a bit bigger than I intended. Um, I probably should have stopped two rows back, but that's okay. He, it'll fit for a while. He can grow into it. We'll be fine. The big challenge here is going to be making the arms proportionate because, you know, I'll be trying it on him and the inclination is to make it fit now, but I have to make it fit the sweater, which is bigger than him. You know what I mean? But here we go. I have, that's the back. This is the yoke of the sweater. And what I've done is it's raglan style. I did the same thing I did for the, um, the hat brim. So I did the in the back loop thing there, made the collar. And then I started for the sleeves, it's double crochet. For the body, it's the lemon peel stitch. I wanted him to have a tighter stitch for this one. Um... This is using the five, a five millimeter crochet hook, I believe. Yep, my dots, five millimeter crochet hook. And he picked out Mandala in the color Chimera, which is kind of a rainbow color. So I have three cakes. This so far is about half a cake. So we'll see how much of the body takes. And I am going to try to keep the arms color controlled so they match. I don't want to just slap on different, you know, have the colors not merging. Um, so we'll see. I, I fear I might have to buy another cake to get enough of the colors to make sure it's nicely balanced and color controlled, but we'll see how it goes. You know, it's, it is what it is. And if it gets to that point, that's a small thing to make a sweater he is going to love. Um, Okay, I got three more whips to show you, and I'm flying, I'm flying. Mm. I'm not flying based on the timestamp. Um, well, like I said, I had a lot to show this week. Uh, Spectre. So I am using my Ginger Snap Yarn Advent from last year to make a sweater for myself. I'm, use, I'm making, oh, the battery's yelling at me, it turned red. We'll talk about this and then I'll change the battery. I'm making Spectre by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I am having so much fun with this. I have just, I'm into section two. I've just done my second increase and I'm getting set up for the first of the bud stitches. So here's where I'm at. I'm still on the second mini of the set. So these are going much further than I thought they would. Um, but here we go. That is what she's looking like so far. I love it. I love the feel of the yarn. This pattern is fun and exciting. Like I said, it goes up to a 5X, but according to the measurements on the pattern, I am a 5X. I'm normally uh, XL, 2XL, 1820. That's my usual US size. Um, so I was a little surprised doing measurements that I ended up as a 5X in this pattern, but those labels are just labels. Go by the measurements and make your darn sweater. And that's what I'm doing. This is going to be 
I am so excited for the sweater. I am so excited. Um, like I said, it's, it's cruising along. I just finished increase round two. So I have to do three rounds of like build up and then round four is the special bud stitch. And then we go from there. So I'm going to start a little bit of fancier stitch work soon. Yay. Oh, it's exciting. Okay. I'm going to go get my new battery and I'll be right back. Hey, right, I'm back got two more whips to show you and oh this is out of order I oh I didn't grab the pattern okay oh well I continued to work on my skinny cake chevron blanket this is the third cake I'm about halfway through so I didn't get quite as much work on this one done as I have on other weeks but that's okay uh last week I put a stitch marker in it where are you stitch marker all right, this is where I ended last week. So I've done that much more. Pretty not bad, if I say so myself. Um, <laughs> again, looking at it, I have a fourth cake. I think I will be done with it when I finish this third cake. So I think bingo is correct. <laughs> um, but this is fun. This is... It's a free pattern from your inspirations, the Wavy Granny Stitch, Wavy Granny Chevron. It's um, Mel from LaFelli's Little Hook and uh, Mama G Gear are doing a cal with this. So if you finish this by April 4th, you can take a picture and send it to Mel and you'll get in on the prizes. Um, but check out Mel's channel figure and to get all the information um she's got a couple of lives where she walks through the pattern and she's trying to show people how to read patterns at the same time it's really great she did a fantastic job i am using the karen skinny cakes the pattern calls for a five or a six weight yarn i chose a three weight and so i had to size up the pattern and use way more yarn than the pattern called for. So that's why I'm kind of not sure how much I should use here because I went rogue. Um, the colorway is Fruit Punch. So pretty. I love it. And Bingo is so excited to get a blankie. Yay! Okay, where should I put this? Because Okay, I'll pick this up and put you where that used to be. Okie dokie. And now, our final item. What? Okay, so I finished round 60. Oh, when I picked it up, I think I was on round 65. So I've done round 66 and 67. I am on round 68, which is the final round of... Is this part 8? Yep. Yeah of part eight of Sophie's Universe. So, here we go. I am taking this slow because I have to concentrate on this one to figure it out. And I find I can't stop mid-instruction. So I have to finish, like, she's got it written out. This is what you do on the short side. This is what you have to do on the long side. I have to finish at least one of those sections in a sitting or I mess myself up. So that's why this gets less work because it has to be a specific time. You know, I can't just pick it up and put it down in any spot. I need to know where I am in this blankie. But here we go. So it doesn't look, I think, that much different from last week, but that's okay. So there's the middle where it started. We'll go back around through. There we go. I'll try to get a big picture of it kind of laid out when I finish this part. That's what I had been trying to do in the past. So, this week, I should finish part eight and hopefully get started on part nine. No promises. I'm, like I said, I'm taking Sophie slow and steady and we're going to win this race. <laughs> That's the whole point. Um, okay, let's put Sophie's instructions back with her. Because that would be bad, wouldn't it? Um, 
Yep, that's all my whips I got to show for you. Thank you. I do have a new car project started, but that lives in the car, and you'll probably only see it when it's done. I'm excited. I have two ball bands to add to my collection. Um, so if you were just here for the Yarny Goodness, thank you for stopping by. I hope you had fun. Let me know what you're working on. I always love to hear that. And let me know if there are any patterns you think I would like. Because I always love to hear about that. I love it. Um, I realized I stuck. Bingo wants to learn to knit. So she um, convinced me to buy her these needles from Walmart when we were there. Um, but they've been falling out and poking me. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the book. Why is the camera so dark? Why have you not readjusted? Focus. Maybe? Eh, okay. Hopefully it'll refocus. That's very odd. Um, okay. The book I am reading. I didn't get tons done on the book this week. I did do stick to my chapter a day, and that's about it. So I'm reading Mark Lawrence, The Book That Wouldn't Burn really annoying to me. Why aren't you focusing? Okay. Um, so I think we left off on chapter 33, 34. I'm up to chapter 41 now. Um, I do now, I think now it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of there's some time travel, but I also think there are parallel worlds. So We'll see. I think the two point of views are from the same world, just different times, but they do access something that is different. So there you go. It, um, yeah, I'm getting more into some of the politics now, which is fun and interesting. And yeah, I like. I like it. I continue to like it. I'm going to keep, of course, reading it. And I think I'll keep going in the series once I finish this. The second book is coming out in April. So there is a novella. There's like a book 1.5. And there is a full second book coming out early April. Um, I don't recall the exact date. <gasps> Big news, Fourth Wing fans. Did you see that on Good Morning America? She announced when book three is coming out. So January 21st, 2025 is the expected release date currently. I'm excited. I'm excited. Want to see what happens. They've revealed the title. It's going to be Onyx Storm. What? What? Let the theories commence. Um, okay, so that's really all I have for book updates. Um, in the health news, since I've been doing little health updates, if you don't want to hear the health news, totally cool. See you later. Um, I improved a lot this week and met with my physical therapist and we decided that we're going to reconvene in a month just to do another check and touch base. She thinks she's taken me kind of as far as she can in the vertigo, vertigo vestibular disorder treatment. I've been having fewer and fewer and fewer and less severe instances of it. So that is fantastic. I am by no means 100% clear, but, um, Yeah, I'm. that's exciting news to me. I'm getting kind of stamps of approval. So I think we're probably not going to have any more updates on what's happening to me for a while. Okay, Brian's calling me. He wants to chat lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Talk to you later. Bye!